Well, an airplane going over in the sounds of the neighbors moving the trash out. That must mean it's time to start Saturday morning cartoons. And I've got, I don't have a cartoon for you this morning, but I do have a drawing of that snake with its tail in its mouth. And it occurred to me, among other things that I'm thinking of as I'm walking to the coffee shop this morning thinking, what am I going to think today? <laughs> Actually, I got a pretty busy schedule for somebody that uh, sits at home in his shorts all day. But anyway, we just got through reading The Wake World with uh, Lola Daydream and her, her uh, trip up the cabalistic trip up the tree of life and in that story the entire tree of life itself is encircled by a snake that keeps eating its tail and it we're introduced to that image and that concept at the very beginning of her trip up the tree of life and at the very, very end, where she says something to the effect of uh, uh, after she's completely awakened in Kether and uh, has completed her entire trip up the Tree of Life and is totally awake, then she mentions the mystery of the snake with its tail in its mouth. And pretty much that is a mystery, like even the mystery of, hey, what made God want to be self-conscious? That's a mystery, okay? If anyone can tell you that actually why, then run from them. <laughs> because I don't think anybody knows that final kind of question. Same thing with this Ouroboros. And then it occurred to me that in a sense, that was the, the cherry on the top of uh, my book, The Key to Solomon's Key. And for the second edition, I actually said, is this the lost symbol uh, of masonry? And so I'm going to read that to you today. That is just chapter 14, very, very short. And it's a beautiful day. It's, it's uh, I think, 71 degrees uh, at 10 a.m. in the morning, going up to 97 later. But anyway, I started off with uh, uh, an epigram from Albert Pike, the famous uh, Masonic scholar. Early in the summer of uh, 1870, Believing that from my imperfect knowledge of Hebrew, I had failed to determine correctly the meaning of many of the words of the degrees, and thinking that many might not be so corrupted as I had supposed, I determined to reinvestigate them all, <clears throat> from the first degree to the thirty-second, and found my suspicions to be true and completed in the spring of 1871 an exhaustive examination of all the words and their meaning and all alike investigation as to the various names of deity of the Hebrews and our ineffable word. I believe I've ascertained with two or three exceptions the real words and their often concealed meaning the results being always interesting and sometimes surprising. Albert Pike. And now we come to the end of the first section of this book. What follows in part two is my brief introduction to the practice of Solomonic magic, pertinent excerpts from the Lesser Key of Solomon, and the names and descriptions of the 72 spirits of the Goetia 
together with their individual seals, by which they are summoned and controlled. I'm sure there'll be magicians who will disagree with me, but I assure you that if you are properly prepared, the remaining pages will provide you with a thorough and tidy handbook for the practice of this venerable and powerful spiritual art. Just to remind you, the title of that handy book, The Key to Solomon's Key. ka -ching. I hope you realize by now that my primary purpose for writing book uh, part one of this book was to help you realize your magical birthright as a Solomon, and that unless you personally experience that transformational realization and possess that mindset, the material in part two will be for you at best useless and silly, and at worst an invitation to delusion and madness. Please don't think that I'm suggesting you must reject the historicity of the Bible or apply for initiation in the Masonic fraternity or indeed any organization in order to achieve this mindset. Religious cynicism is not a replacement for wisdom and lodge dues cannot purchase wisdom or illumination. It's a big mistake to believe that any order or coven, or club, or league, or fellowship, or fraternity, or sorority, or cult, or pact, or sect, secret, or otherwise, holds a monopoly on truth, or can be the sole transmitter of the secret of the ages. And I believe, as I've readily confessed, that I've received immeasurable personal, professional, and spiritual benefit from my involvement in Freemasonry and my <clears throat> 35 and it now almost 50 year uh, years as an initiate of Ordo Templi Orientis. But this enrichment has been the result of, and to paraphrase JFK, has been the result of not what the magic of the Masons and the OTO did for me, but what magic I did for myself because of my work and experiences in those two great orders. For me, the OTO and the Masons complement each other extraordinarily well. While the former has initiated me to the most profound and subtle spiritual secrets of magic and nature, the latter has inducted me into the current, the historic current of human thought and endeavor that has for century kept that knowledge and wisdom alive. In the objective reality of the world of politics, that current made its most revolutionary and dramatic cultural statement as a great Masonic experiment in government, the creation of the United States of America. In this highly entertaining novel, or in his highly entertaining novel, The Lost Symbol, Dan Brown takes us on a whirlwind tour of Masonic Washington, D.C. and a tour of American history, indeed, of the history of Western civilization. It deserves our attention, recognition, and respect. I know for a fact that prior to its publication, Masonic lodges all over the United States were alerted <clears throat> by their respective Grand Lodges to prepare themselves to process an influx of membership applications following the book's release. This phenomenon is doubly gratifying to those of us within the fraternity who see in the Masonic experience the opportunity for profound spiritual transformation, transformation of the individual, transformation of society, transformation of humanity. 
these new Masons are coming into the craft, not because their fathers and grandfathers were Masons, not because they seek networking advantages to their social, business, or political aspirations, but because they want to be part of a movement in human thought and a movement in human evolution. This yearning in each of us for self-perfection and self-realization is embodied in the concept of the Freemason's search for the lost word. In Mr. Brown's fanciful book, the plot revolves around the idea that the lost word may not be a word at all, but rather a symbol whose image can trigger in the properly prepared mind the final revelation of truth. In the story, this lost symbol will eventually be inserted inside another famous and venerable symbol, the Ouroboros, a serpent or dragon swallowing its own tail, thereby forming a circle. And see the image that uh, headed this chapter, I showed it to you. Without entering into a discussion of the viability of conjectures put forth in a work of fiction, I have to confess that I consider the Ouroboros, or more precisely, the emptiness within the circle created by the Ouroboros, to be a sublimely appropriate venue for both the Mason's lost word and Mr. Brown's lost symbol. the emptiness within the circle. Modern magicians, Kabbalists, and esoteric Freemasons alike hold this great zero in mystic veneration, for it represents the gateway through which existence springs from potentiality into manifestation. Nothing bringing forth everything at the beginning of the creation cycle. And the gateway through which manifest existence returns back at the end of the creation cycle. Everything returning to nothing. There are two tarot cards that Hermetic Kabbalists tell us represent these two zeros. They are the first and final cards of the Trump series, The Fool and the Universe. And I've got them even outside here. I've got, there's the Fool, Zero, and the Universe. Zero. Okay. I told you there'd be cartoons today. These two zeros are the Aleph, or excuse me, the Alpha and the Omega of being. The negative issuing into manifestation and the manifested being, its purpose fulfilled, returning back into the negative. The silence that precedes the creative word or logos and the silence that follows its reabsorption. It's impossible to properly discuss this inscrutable super zero without sounding like a fool, which is why I believe the fool card is at once the most clearly defined and most profoundly inscrutable card in the entire deck. It is by my humble reckoning 
a most fitting candidate for Mr. Brown's lost symbol. And the silence, the fool, represents perhaps the only contender for the lost word of Freemasonry. Silence. This symbol, this word, cannot be discovered by searching in books or solving Kabbalistic puzzles. It can only be found inside you. To paraphrase Hamlet, there are more things inside you than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Wonderful things. Terrible things. But your things, nonetheless. As a magician, as a Solomon, you'll need to meet and master them all. In the Gospel according to Thomas, Jesus is said to have said, If you bring forth that which is inside you, it will save you. If you do not, it will destroy you. And I... Uh, close this chapter with the uh, something I uh, wrote fictionally, of course, in my uh, novel, The Accidental Christ, soon to be out, soon to be published with, uh, uh, well, anyway. And it's the initiation of the perfect master. where I talk about nothing. These are questions and answers. The candidate answers. Are you the feet? No, I am not. When you have no feet, I am that which remains. Are you the legs? No, I am not. When you have no legs, I am that which remains. Are you the phallus? Mm, no, I am not. When you have no phallus, I guess I'm that which remains. Are you the hands? No, I am not. When you have no hands, I am that which remains. Are you the arms? No, I am not. When you have no arms, I am that which remains. Are you the flesh? No, I'm not. When you have no flesh, I'm that which remains. Are you the bowels? No, I am not. When you have no bowels, I'm that which remains. Are you the lungs? No, I am not. When you have no lungs, I am that which remains. Are you the heart? No, I am not. When you have no heart, I am that which remains. Are you the spine? No, I am not. When you have no spine, I'm that which remains. Are you the brain? No, I am not. When you have no brain, I am that which remains. Are you the blood, the bones, the sinews, the hair? No, I am not. When you cast no shadow, I am that which remains. Okay. That's, uh, I thought about something else as I was reading something here. But anyway, that's it for today. That's cartoon, cartoon Saturday, Saturday morning cartoons. Now, as long as we're thinking about words and things like that, 
uh, the fool card is Aleph, okay? A. And the universe card, those two zeros, is Tet, or uh, it's not Tet, Tav. Now, Aleph means ox, <laughs> and all things that the ox meant to folks back then. And Tav is a seal or a signature or a mark. Aleph enumerates to one, Tav enumerates to 400. 401. Four, zero, one. That has little Kabbalistic, tells a Kabbalistic story of its own. But Aleph Tav also is uh, uh, literally a word meaning the Alpha and Omega, just like uh, Alpha and Omega are the front, front and back, beginning and end of the uh, uh, Greek alphabet. At, A-T, is uh, the beginning and the end of the Hebrew alphabet. And all of that is uh, uh, perhaps a rich source of things to contemplate in your, medi in your meditations. Or when you're trying to make a, a symbol uh, that would uh, uh, express what we just what we just talked about, you could find your own Masonic secret word. Is what I'm trying to trying to say just by playing with these two letters. Well, that's it from Rabbit Beaver Farm and Reptile Garden. I got my uh, got my grandpa Dewey cap on, and I'll see you tomorrow uh, for Sunday school. I think I'm going to try to talk Constance into uh, uh, doing one of her favorite things, uh, besides tormenting me. After saying that, maybe no. <laughs> no, she doesn't torment me. I torment myself as. As we all I do. I thought you tormented me. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, you can't tell we've been married too long. We can't tell agony from ecstasy anymore. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> anyway, we'll try to drag her out into the garden tomorrow and, uh, and do something quite appropriate for Sunday school. And until then... Try to be patient. <laughs> Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. <laughs>